In this video we're going to show you how to play back and download recorded video using the client software. First, log into the client software, go to the main menu page, and select the playback icon. Choose your DVR or NVR from the left column, and select the cameras that you'd like to playback video from. Here we're going to select four cameras to view playback in a four channel camera grid. After selecting the cameras, scroll down to record type to specify the type of video you would like to play back. You have several options such as general, which is continuous video recording, and MD, which is motion detection. In this case, we're going to select all records. Next, choose the stream type and date, then click search. The cameras correspond to the camera grid. Simply click a video quadrant and you'll see it reflects the camera's name on the left column. The video timelines for the cameras can be shown on the bottom. Select the camera you want to view video from and click the play button. These yellow blocks on the timeline are motion detection video segments. This camera was only recording motion events from the mainstream. You can scroll through the timeline by clicking and dragging your mouse. You can also use the mouse wheel to stretch or shorten the timeline. Simply click within a yellow video segment to watch the video recorded at that particular time. Pull up playback from a second camera by clicking the empty video quadrant and pressing the play button within that timeline. Or simply click a video segment. The second camera was configured to record continuous video as well as motion recording. Continuous or general video recording displays on the timeline as a green bar. Motion recorded events, shown as yellow, are overlaid on top of the continuous green bar. This allows you to see when a motion event took place. Within the green bar, we can scroll to the beginning of a yellow segment to see what triggered the motion event. And here we see it was a person walking up the left side of the video. We can pull up video playback for the third and fourth channel, as well as have four channels playing back video simultaneously. You'll see that each video is playing back at a different time. To sync these four video channels, simply hit the sync button near the bottom of the screen. Now after syncing, you'll see a message appear for the second and third channel, saying the channel has no record in current period. Now this is normal, it means that motion events were not recorded during this time for channels 2 and 3. Let's scroll to later in the day when all four channels recorded a motion event and then click the yellow time segment. And you'll see that with sync mode still enabled, all four channels are displaying video from the same exact time. These cameras each have a substream that's configured to record continuously. We'll specify four cameras, search all records, and change the type from mainstream to substream. Now this only applies if you're recording a substream continuously. Next we'll pull up the video playback for each channel, noting the continuous green bar on the timeline. The cameras are playing back at different times, so we're going to click the sync button and all four cameras will sync nicely, displaying video at the same time. Next we're going to show you how to export video from your recorder onto your computer. Scroll within the timeline to find the starting point of the video you want to export. Then select the scissors icon in the bottom left corner and you'll see the starting point is created. Next we need to specify the ending point which populates further down the timeline. You can use the mouse wheel to shrink the timeline, also click and drag to move down the timeline and find the ending point. So here's the ending point, we're just going to click and drag this point closer to the starting point. Here you can see the start time, end time, and duration which is 32 seconds. In this case here I'm only going to need a short 16 second video segment. Next. Click the scissors icon again. Choose a path and specify a folder for the video to save to. Here we're going to save to our documents folder. 
under export format you'll see a couple different options for this export we're going to choose AVI and then click OK twice here we see the export status bar and to the right is a folder icon click this to pull up the folder to where the video will export you can see that the video export first loads as a DAV file and will change to AVI once it's done exporting and double click this file to watch the exported video clip now we're going to export another clip but this time we're going to export a video segment from two motion recordings this process is the same create a beginning and end point by selecting the scissors icon and you can see there is a large gap within this time segment We're going to export this clip as an AVI file. After this video is finished exporting, go to the folder location. In this case, it's the Documents folder. Here's our video clip, and you can see that the time marker jumps to reflect the first and second motion events from which we exported this video clip. Lastly, we're going to export a video clip as a DAV file. Select the segment to export and choose Original Format as the Export Format option. Original Format is the preferred export format as this will save your video as a DAV file. Make sure that the box next to Export Smart Player is checked and click OK twice to export. After clicking the folder icon, we see that two new files populated, an application and a DAV file. The application is Smart Player, which will allow you to play DAV files. Simply click this DAV file, which is the exported video clip, and it will automatically open in Smart Player. You can select the single camera grid view and expand the timeline using the mouse wheel to select a specific time frame. We suggest DAV files when exporting as they provide timeline and motion event information that can be retrieved using Smart Player as shown in the next video. Thanks for watching.